I saw the Hacksmith's video the other day. This is an exact copy of my left collarbone, printed in a bone-like material. And this is that exact same collarbone, but coated in a thousand microns of Nanovate alloy. And that gave me an idea. Can you send it to me? Yeah, I, I managed to get a uh, non-medical CT scan. That's confidential medical images of me, of all of me. If when you arrive in Seattle, you come up here, I will show you something incredible made from your CT scan. All right, awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing the shop. I waited a long time for this team up. And this is 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCBWay, 8% off, link in the description. You know what to do. My idea for this is to take James's CT scan, cut off this part of it, add some claws. And the goal here would be able to print it in multiple materials and multiple colors. And I, and I have some ideas. Oh, okay. Here are the materials that I wanna use for this build. And, and these are good. These are from Protopasta. So first of all, within the grand scheme of things, there's going to be some veins. And if we look at our veins under our skin, they look a little blue. So protopasta's cobalt blue is what we're using for the veins of this project. Everybody's got some meat inside them, some more than others. But for this specific project, the, the meat within the hand, the muscle, the muscly meat, we're gonna be using Amy Double D's Blood of My Enemies from protopasta. Now the bones, those things that are within us that, that, that give us our rigidity. And so for that, we're gonna be using Protopasta's White C-Mat PLA. The skin though, the skin, we're squishy, pinchy humans. And so what I wanted was some sort of slightly flexible material. And I know that Alex at Protopasta has been working on a TPE. So thanks to Alex, we're gonna be using some flexible TPE from Protopasta for the build. Last but not least, I want to print the claws, Wolverine's claws in this model in metal. Now, if we're using standard FFF style 3D printing, I know I can't print metal. This is not a Meltio machine, but what we can do is print metal infused materials such as <laughs> Protopasta's composite steel PLA. There is a little bit of steel in here. This can be sanded and polished and it smells good too. These are going to be the Wolverine. I'm small. I'm sorry. The James Arene, Wolver Smith, Sm Smith Arene. Good one. I don't know. You come up with a better term for that. But whatever we're doing, we're using Protopasta's composite steel PLA for the claws. Now for the printer. Whoa. All right. For the printer, we're going to be using the Prusa XL. And on the one we're using, I've got five different 0.4 millimeter obsidian nozzles on it. Because with the composite PLA, you need some sort of wear resistance on the nozzle because there are metal particles within the filament. This is great too because it's got five heads. There's going to be minimal waste in the project. And with a 360 millimeter cubed build volume, we're going to be able to print what we need at human scale all at once. Well, that's all good, but... Now we gotta create the model. It's a CT scan. I don't know what I'm doing, so let me make a call. A few moments later. That is amazing. Thank you so very much. We're in luck. You remember the episode we did where doctors at Seattle Children's Hospital utilized 3D printing for surgeons to train on the best way to repair airway obstructions in the tracheas of children. Remember that? So the guy that takes the CT scans and creates the 3D models, his name is Seth. He said, I could send him the CT scan. He'll chop off the arm, add some claws, and get us started. I guess we have to go over to Seattle Children's Hospital. Let's pack some bags. Everybody, this is Seth here at Seattle Children's, and you're a self-proclaimed imaging nerd, right? True. What I'm going to take you through is kind of what we would do with any patient that we would see and we would basically take their CT and we would bring it into the computer and it looks a lot like this. So okay. these are a little bit under a millimeter and okay. what that gives you is this little kind of stair step quality. Oh, okay. And so even the best quality image that you have will require a bunch of cleanup. We can only see what we can see on the scans. And if you want to start mm. to add something that's not there, we might design surgical cut guides that could be snapped onto the bone, almost like a Lego. 
Oh, I see. And so that's very similar to what you'd have to do if you wanted to make this patient into a superhero <laughs> and add some things like claws. And so let's take a look at the outer. So you've got your outer and I've cut this away just like we might do in a patient where you'd want to help the surgeon maybe see something in the wrist. I see. Oh, and, and so, so oh, this is actually something you might do in a medical procedure or for a medical procedure is, is do a cutaway. Absolutely. And you can imagine you can start to add parts back in. So let's make this transparent and then let's add the bones back. And so you can see oh, here's the how the bones are going to fit. And you have two bones in your forearm. The do you know which bones are? The radius and the ulna. There you go. Not really sure, always how to spell them, but yeah. you know. And then you can start to imagine that you can put things like muscle in. And so in the CT scan, muscle and vessels and everything just ends up as a single right. material. As you go forward though, you can imagine like, okay, if you need some claws, well, you would just have to draw in some shape that approximates some I claws. See. I had to go online and try and understand like, what do the claws really look like? And they're not a lot of great ideas online. and even worse, there are very few ideas at where the claws go in the arm. And so initially I had made a set of claws that kind of looked like this, that kind of got stuck on the bone. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, well, how are these gonna slide? If they're stuck on this bone, they're not really gonna slide very well. They're just gonna kind of get stuck there. And so over time, I kind of added in a little different part. I figured like, okay, maybe there's like a keyhole, something <laughs> that might slide. This though, from the medical perspective, gives us a really good idea of what would need to happen in order to put the claws in. It, I also thought it would be kind of nice if this was a pediatric, like a very small pediatric patient. It might be fun to see how this looks. Okay. It looks pretty good on the screen. And then you wonder like, will it actually translate into oh, yeah. the printed part? And so, you know, I thought it would be useful if this was a little oh, Wolverine, that. you know? And so this is the same May I? type of print that we would make for an airway or a, a bone or a kidney. Well, with the airways, I was here before and we talked about the airways and being able to print the tracheas mm -hmm. and the different ways for surgery planning. And so this, this technically is a surgery planning device for Wolverine. Well, this is amazing. I really appreciate it, Seth. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Um, I'll let you know what we come up with at the end. That's right. When he comes back for his for the surgery didn't work the first time, we're here. That's right. We're here to help. That's right. Wow. Uh, Seth is like a mad scientist. I love that dude so much. Seth is giving us something technical. And what we need to do is make something that's printable. And I also I have an idea because if if we've got James's hand from the CT scan like this, and we've got claws coming out. Uh, that'll look cool, but I kind of want, I want some sort of cut down the side where the claws are sticking out, but it reveals the veins and the bones, kind of, kind of a cut. I, I, I took what Seth gave us and a really crude drawing of what I wanted and I sent it off to Bugman. He is a, he is an incredibly talented 3D modeler. He's been shown on the channel before. He's done really neat stuff. I asked him to do one more neat thing, and that's to bring the data we got from Seth into the vision of what we want for this Wolverine hand for the Hacksmith. And he did not disappoint. I asked him what exactly he did, and he used Nomad Sculpt to do this. And let me just read you what he said. I took the models that you sent me and subdivided the mesh to allow me to sculpt in details which were lost joints between bones and even wrinkles on the knuckles and nails. So in the, the thing that Seth gave us, it's, it's accurate, but Bugman was able to sculpt in further details that are appropriate for our meaty selves. I then chopped up the bones to make way for the blades. I made and stretched the skin back over the new hand shape. Then I made muscles and I made veins. And then finally, I chopped away chunks of each element to give the diagram direction look that you guys were looking for, not to Halloween. That makes a lot of sense. If I'm asking you to take away some skin and some meat, well, that could look pretty severe. And we weren't going for that. We wanted to look more like a celebration of something. And so using that, Bugman was able to come up with an incredible 3D model. And not only that, the model that he created was separated into the five parts that we need. The veins, the meat, 
the bones, the flesh, and the blades. James is scheduled to be here in Seattle in a few days, and I need to get these printed. Let's get to it. Well, look who's here, it's James. Hey guys. This is the Hacksmith, obviously. You know him from miniature Cybertruck to the 34,000, 434 pound hammer. The list goes on and on. Yeah. We've actually been at the herd everything. and kind of toured some <laughs> of the places and got to see the John Wick suit. Yep. That Good was one. pretty cool. You're on a little bit of a West Coast tour and I did ask you for your CT scan because I saw the video. You did these incredible adamantium bones, right? Yep. Do you have one? I did actually bring one. Look at that, <laughs> Nativate N1210, jeez. It's a resin 3D printed copy of my collarbone. So like right? the left collarbone. That goes into your shoulder oh, joint okay. basically and then that goes like right there. It so. feels incredible. Can I like, yeah? So move that aside. So you haven't seen these. I just want to make sure you know like, this is cool. Okay, so. Ooh. This, wow. this is your hand <laughs> with, with stainless steel claws. That is awesome. I want one. So we printed that on the Prusa XL in five different materials. Yeah. This is Amy Double D's Blood of My Enemies. <laughs> um, Protopasta created a, a new TPU to use. Really? As the, as the epidermis. Um, yeah, I, I had a matte fiber for the bone. The blue is just a, uh, one of their blue PLAs and the claws are the stainless steel. Wow, so the metal, metal fill. Yeah. And I thought a better way to do this would be to print the claws separately. So I ran out of TPU, so I made you another one. And if you look, the claws are missing. That is so cool. So what I did is I printed them in the, stain, the same uh, stainless from Protopasta yeah. and I sanded them a little bit and give those a feel. That's weird. I can tell there's metal here. Yeah. But it doesn't feel like no. It, it, uh, the, like the lightness the, is. The weight is, yeah. yeah. So now go ahead and put in your claws. So your longest one is gonna go right there. <laughs> and then the middle one is there. Now with being able to connect these, we can use 3D glue or a super glue to put them in. But I thought for shipping purposes, because you know, you get to, you get to take these home and put them on your desk at the Herc. I figure awesome. shipping without the claws is gonna Might be, be a, a little idea. bit easier. Yeah. You never know how many times they're gonna kick the box. <laughs> My friend at Seattle Children's took your CT scan and, and showed us how to make a 3D model from it. And then we took that 3D model and gave it to a designer, uh, Bugman. Yep. And he was able to then use that as a reference to create this. Wow. Because there's, there's a lot that goes into that model of the CT scan, but for 3D yep. printing, we wanted to separate it into the five components so we mm -hmm. could print it on the XL. These are awesome. You know what? We'll send these home with you. You can display awesome. these on your desk so cool. back at the Herc. And then um, you never know, because this was printed on an XL, we may actually uh, put this at one of the booths that Prusa attends oh, at one of cool. the shows. So yeah. uh, at a Rep Rap show or Rapid or Form Next, like you actually might get to shake James's Wolverine hand. <laughs> if you made this fire awesome, don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Make all the things. And as always, high five. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs>